And joining us now is the spokesperson for the Israeli Defense Forces, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner. Thanks for joining us this morning. The IDF says the assault will be by land, by air, by sea. Is this imminent, and can you explain the objective? Good morning, Martha. Yes, we are on day nine since the brutal massacre of families, men, women, and children in the south of Israel by Hamas as an orchestrated strategic attack against the soft underbelly of our society. Um, we are currently striking Hamas at, in its entirety, from the leaders at the head, from Yechia Simnoir, who has a mark on a, a target on his back, uh, the the mastermind of the massacre, the president, the, the prime minister of Hamas, the person who has subordinated the entire institution of Hamas to the terrorist act actions of this terrorist organization, um, to all the way down to Bilal Al Kidra, who we killed last night in a strike who was one of the Nukba, the commando unit that is uh, Hamas's commander, commando unit that conducted an attack um, on the Saturday of October 7th in Kibbutz Nirim. And we will strike Hamas from the top through its institutions all the way down to the individuals that conducted the butchery of our babies. Um, we did not ask for this war, but we will win it. Meanwhile, you have 2,300 Palestinians in Gaza who've been killed. You have a million Palestinians who are still looking for a way to get out of northern Gaza and go south after you ordered an evacuation, but they have nowhere to go. And it is already a humanitarian disaster. So we have instructed um, people living in the north of Gaza to exit towards the south, to move down. And then we're seeing the images of people actually adhering to our message. You know, this is just what a humanitarian uh, means in order to get, keep people out of harm's way so that we can deal with Hamas. You know, people are moving, people are listening. I don't know if you've seen, but Hamas actually tried to obstruct their movement. They established checkpoints to try and prevent people. They disseminated messaging, telling people to ignore that, ignore that. And it just goes to show how Hamas is actually trying to put the people of Gaza at more risk. They have no regard for human life. Israeli or Palestinian. But, but the United Nations called your order impossible. And we've seen people trying to get out who can't. They can't go through Egypt. Doctors Without Borders says it's outrageous. Israel has said they will follow the rules of war. So why not allow everyone who needs to get out to get out before this assault begins? As I said, we're directing people out of the north of Gaza before uh, we increase our strikes there against the hub and heart of Hamas's operations. And, and we are seeing that people are actually evacuating. Indeed, we would like to see the humanitarian organizations uh, assisting in the evacuation of people for, for the welfare of people and not side with Hamas telling them not to evacuate. That is ridiculous. You know, we've seen Hamas orchestrate... Uh, um, uh, over the last day, a, 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 an attack on the people themselves in order to prevent them from evacuating. Yesterday, throughout the day, there were many images broadcasted around the world of a supposed convoy that the IDF uh, attacked, causing 70 deaths or so. This was a false move. It was one of Hamas's many manipulations. And unfortunately, um, you know, we need to be very clear on what are the facts that actually ha are actually happening. Before we report about these types of incidents on the ground, we need to have the facts clear. We can't just deduce that this was an Israeli strike. Well, certainly people are trying to do this. All, all of this is complicated, of course, by the hostages, 150 hostages. What do you know about them? What can you tell us? So we are very concerned, Martha, of their welfare. Indeed, it is Hamas who has the responsibility to return them to Israel immediately. Um, I, I want to be very cautious in anything I say because I don't want to jeopardize any steps that could happen in order to bring to their release, hopefully. But uh, it is a, you know, a component of our operational planning and it does influence. So I think out of respect for them and, and hopefully for their welfare, I think we should leave it at that. Okay, we have seen increased fighting on Israel's northern border with Lebanon, and Iran's foreign minister met with the head of Hezbollah and said the terror group 
is ready to respond to any move Israel makes and that the opening other and that opening other fronts is a real possibility. How are you preparing for that and how likely is that? So we have recruited some 300,000 reservists uh, in order to be prepared for any eventuality. Those reservists are both for the southern front on the border with Gaza. So they are in staging grounds preparing for a potential ground invasion if the government instructs, instructs us to do so. But also they are dispersed in, throughout the communities and on the border and frontier with Lebanon in anticipation for a potential um, uh, uptick in violence with Hezbollah. We have had several skirmishes along the border over the last few days. And even today, during the day, we've had anti-tank guided missiles fired at forces, in, indeed causing some casualties. So we need to be prepared. Um, I would highly recommend that Hezbollah watch very closely what is happening to Hamas and their organization in Gaza as we speak. If they have, they should be very cautious of cross crossing that threshold because we are uh, determined to defend the state of Israel. With regard to Iranian involvement, of course they're involved. They have trained and uh, funded and, and uh, equipped the terrorist organizations on our doorstep, they're, you know, they've used millions and millions and billions of dollars in order to do so. So, of course, they're involved. And, and we are watching that also very closely to see if that has any further influence on our fronts. OK, thanks very much for joining us this morning, Lieutenant Colonel. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.